Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob Bidolf. Now then, I am a children's author and illustrator. You might have seen some of my picture books, like this one. It's called Show and Tell. This is all about a class of children who bring in more and more kind of ridiculous things for show and tell. They're quite a kind of competitive class. Look, uh, Charlie here brings in a pirate ship hat. So Darcy brings in some gold violins. And then look, it gets more and more progressively crazy. We have a really, really big sandwich. We have a robot. We have a laser sword, parrots. And then where's my favorite one? Violet brings in Big Ben. <laughs> it's a very, very silly book, but I really, really like it. Now this is a bit different because I'm going to show you a book that at the time of recording has not even come out yet. But I have a very early proof edition. Um, it's kind of like a test edition. And this book, my brand new picture book, is called I Follow the Fox. And this is like, there's only a couple of these in the whole world. It's like a little proof version. And we do this just to make sure that everything kind of looks okay before we print thousands and thousands of the actual book. And so I've got one of the only like a few copies there are in the world. But I wanted to show you it to you now because it's available for you to pre-order, okay? So you can go online and you can look up I Follow the Fox by me and you can order it so that the day it comes out, which is in October of 2024, you will get yours delivered to your door the day it comes out. Or you can go into your local bookshop and you can say, can I reserve a copy of I Follow the Fox and they will get one and keep it for you. So you can collect it on the day it comes out. So really please do check it out because I'm very proud of it. It's all about, well actually look, here we go, look, uncorrected bound, bra bound proof. <laughs> That's quite hard to say not for resale or quotation. And um, it's all about this little boy who has a toy fox and he loses his toy fox. But then one day he meets this little fox who kind of helps him find his toy fox. There he is with his toy fox. I'm showing you inside, but this no one's really seen inside yet. So this is very, very exclusive. And you can see that the drawings are slightly, the illustration, sorry, are slightly different to my usual style. They're a bit more kind of painterly, a bit more realistic you see and I'm very very proud of this book so why don't you pre-order your copy now if you're watching this after October of 2024 then you can just go and buy a copy <laughs> or get it in your library it's out now but for me at the time of recording it's not out but you can pre-order it so that's fun isn't it a little bit of an exclusive there for you um, but we are here today to draw a character from my series of novels the peanut Jones books. Now there were three books in the series. This one here, Peanut Jones in the End of the Rainbow, at the and the End of the Rainbow is the final book in the trilogy. And I'm super, super proud of these books. I'll just flick through. You can see how many illustrations I've done in these books. There's like hundreds and hundreds of illustrations and they're very, very detailed illustrations. But I'm very, very excited because this version here, the paperback version, is out now. It's brand new. It's just come out. And I'm so proud of these books. And the paperback versions are a little bit cheaper than the hardback versions so um, hopefully lots and lots of you will be able to get this book and read it and I really want to know what you think of it but we are going to draw today a character from these stories let's see if I can find them okay so the character we're going to draw is called Woodhouse and Woodhouse is a rat and um He's got a very important part to play in the story, actually. We don't meet him until the end of the second book, but he has a very, very important part to play in the story. There he is on his little deck chair, having a cocktail. Um, and there's the back of his head here. But Woodhouse, so Woodhouse is a rat. Have I said that? He's a rat. So basically, we are gonna draw a cartoon rat today. And rats are super fun to draw, um, as you will see. Um, but Woodhouse, in my book, he's a Scottish rat. He talks like that. He's from, I think he's from Glasgow. And uh, that's a terrible Scottish accent, isn't it, Rob? I'm gonna get all my Scottish viewers are gonna be complaining about my Scottish accent. I'm not very good at it. But he is named after Woodhouse. He's named after um, somebody that I used to work with when I worked for the NME. Um, if you don't know what the enemy is, you can ask your parents. It was a magazine about music, sort of rock music. And I worked with a guy called Alan Woodhouse on that. And I decided, and he was Scottish, and I decided to name this character after him. Um, so that is why we are drawing this rat today. It's after Woodhouse in the Peanut Jones books. Um, but I'm excited to show you how to do it because it's a really fun one, right? What you're gonna need is a piece of paper. You are gonna need a pen or a pencil something to draw with. You might want something to colour with a bit later on as well. 
And this is how Draw With Rob works, just in case you've never watched one of these videos. Um, we're going to do this drawing together. And I'm going to break this drawing of a rat down into little bite-sized pieces. Okay, so that might mean I will draw a little circle here, a line there, a little squiggle there. But whatever, there'll be very, very small bits of the drawing. Because sometimes when people th think they're rubbish at drawing, it's because they look at a finished drawing and they think, I can't do that. There's no way I can do that drawing. But if you then break it down into bite-sized pieces, you find that you can do it. And some, you know, I'm here just to help you with the order that we do this drawing in. That's all I'm here for, because everybody can draw, you know. I promise you, everyone can draw. If you watch this whole video and draw with me, I promise at the end you'll have something you're very, very proud of. And I will prove to you that you can draw, trust me. And you know, there's lots of things in life this applies to. You can break things down. If, you, if you're overwhelmed by something, just break it down into smaller parts and it means you, you will be able to tackle that problem much, much more easy. So Draw With Rob, I think, is a really good metaphor for living your life. <sighs> that was a bit deep, wasn't it? <laughs> right, let's get on with our drawing, shall we? So grab yourself your piece of paper, grab yourself a pen or a pencil, and let's start. Now I'm gonna start this drawing today right down at the bottom of our drawing. So we're doing a cartoon mouse. Our mouse is gonna be sort of sitting up, right? So we're gonna start right at the bottom though, and we're gonna draw a horizontal line about, do about that long, what's that? Six centimeters, something like that, across the bottom of our page. Now from the right hand end of this line, I want you to come up and over and go along about halfway along that line, like that in a sort of parallel line, okay? Then we are gonna go down right into the middle of that first line that we drew, and we're just gonna come up and around in a curve like that. It will become clear, I promise you, what we're doing will become clear. Now, the next thing I want you to do is from the left-hand side of that first line that we drew, I want you to draw a long line, sort of coming up, not dead straight, we're gonna curve it around, in fact, like so, about, yeah, about that long. So we start off, we go out slightly to the left and then we come around to the right, like so. Then, from the middle of this funny shape that we drew here, we're gonna do another line that comes, first of all, we're gonna go out slightly to the right, then we're gonna come back in, round to the left, then we're gonna go upwards, and we're gonna follow that sort of curve, around like that, and then we're gonna stop about there. So slightly lower than the other side. Is it starting to make sense to you yet? It is to me, because I know what we're drawing, but maybe it isn't to you. I'm not gonna tell you what's going on quite yet. What I want you to do next, so level with the top of this curve, but here on the line, we're gonna follow that curve around. We're gonna do the same thing again, but we're gonna do it there, like that. And then we're gonna draw another one of these shapes, but slightly up and to the right. So let's start with a line going along like that. And we curve around, then we do a straight line, disappearing back behind there, like so. Then I'll tell you what we do. I'm gonna get my really thin pen. We're just gonna add three little lines there and three little lines there. Now maybe you can see that these two things we've drawn here are feet, okay? They are our rat's rear feet. So that means these are kind of the haunches of our rat as he kind of sits down. And then this is the tummy and this is our rat's back. You seeing that? You seeing that yet? <laughs> Let's carry on drawing from here. So we're gonna to go to the top of this line and we're gonna head left and we're gonna curve around and come all the way back past where we started. It's almost like a sausage shape. And we're gonna stick out quite far like that. Okay. Then let's turn around. We do a little U-turn and we're gonna go back in like that, so it's sort of like a funny S shape, but mirror image. Then from this point, we're gonna go up and over. And we're gonna join back up with this line here, as smoothly as you can. There, 
our rat is really starting to take shape now. So can you see this little bit we drew here is gonna be our rat's smiley mouth. And then this sticky outy bit here is gonna be our rat's nose. First of all, let's give our rat some ears. Now the ears are easy. We're just gonna draw quite a big circle that just sort of brushes that side there. So a circle about that sort of size. And that's gonna be our first rat ear. And the second one is gonna be sitting just behind that. So it's gonna be the same size, but we're gonna do it coming out of here and just sort of sitting behind like that. So the two ears are at the top of the head. Okay, now I'm gonna to switch to my thin pen for this bit because we're gonna start adding some details to our rat's face. First of all, we're gonna do our rat's eyes. Now, this is a cartoon rat and sometimes you don't follow the rules with cartoons. So although our rat is kind of facing to the right, we're gonna do both of the eyes here. So we're gonna do one eye right next to this sort of junction here, this corner, we're gonna do one eye about that size there. And then see that sort of looks right, it's looking that way. But if I do the other eye right next to it, pretty much touching, suddenly our rat is looking more towards us. See what I mean? Looks a little bit of a Mickey Mouse look to it. A little bit of a Mickey Mouse look to that area. See what I mean? Let's do some pupils. Now, because this rat is facing right but looking at us, we're gonna do the pupils very slightly left of center in this eye when we color it in. And that makes the rat look like he's looking straight at us. So slightly left of center. You'd think it makes it look like he's looking to the left, but actually look, he's looking straight at us. Okay, next, let's give our rats some teeth. Rats have fabulous, do you want some rat facts? Okay, I'm gonna give you a rat fact about rats' teeth specifically. Do you know what? They never, ever stop growing rats' teeth. <laughs> if they didn't gnaw stuff and bite stuff, which is what sort of naturally wears them down, their teeth would just keep growing for their whole life and have these great big long teeth, but they don't because they use their teeth a lot to gnaw and break stuff and eat and that kind of thing. So that's what keeps them down, but they never stop growing. Isn't that amazing? What else can I tell you about rats? Well, they're nocturnal. Do you know what nocturnal means? That means they're awake at night. So when we're asleep, that's when rats are awake. And usually during the day, rats are asleep. That's why we don't see that many rats, which is weird because there are way more rats in the world than there are humans. Did you know that? <laughs> they vastly outnumber humans. Um, but they, they live underground, which helps them sort of stay out of our sight. Um, but we rarely see them because partly because they're nocturnal, partly because they live underground. But occasionally you will see one, won't you? And we saw, because we don't see them very often, we're a bit like, oh, there's a rat. But you know, if you think about squirrels, we see them all the time, we're not scared of them. So why should we be scared of rats? It's a funny thing, isn't it? It's a funny thing. So there we go. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, oh yeah, this is good. So the eyes, we've just drawn the rat's eyes. Do you know what, rat's eyes, they're sort of on the sides of their heads in real life, not in cartoon rats, but in real life. And you know what, the, their eyes can move kind of independently. They can move in the opposite directions. Isn't that amazing? Sort of swivelly eyes. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. I reckon it's pretty cool to be a rat. Anyway, there we go, some rat facts for you. But anyway, teeth. We started with teeth, didn't we? Because I was telling you my brilliant fact about their teeth never stop growing, but let's draw some teeth. So we're gonna draw the two front teeth. We're gonna do them sort of over this bit here. So we're gonna draw sort of a rectangle, but our rectangle is gonna go slightly, slightly narrower at the bottom than the top. And these two teeth are gonna be right next to each other. There. Two front teeth. This is what Woodhouse in my book Peanut looks like. So it is a sort of generic rat, but specifically it's Woodhouse. And then the bottom teeth we're going to do in this space here. So we're going to do similar size coming up, one there, and then another one there. There. <laughs> I like this little character. He's fun. Now we need to give our rat a nose. He's got the this, this bit sort of like the muzzle but we're gonna add a nose. I might use my brush pen for this. So what I want you to do, sort of on the end of that, we're gonna draw an egg shape that sort of overlaps the end. Quite long and sort of, a sort of thin egg shape like that. I'm gonna go in with my thin pen and make that a bit more rounded. Like so. There we go. A little ratty nose. <laughs> He's so fun, this character. Now, 
We are going to add some whiskers. I'm going to add whiskers kind of either side of the nose. And I'm going to add eyebrows too. But I'm not going to do that until I have finished the drawing. Because I'm going to colour mine in. And I always talk about this, don't I? But it's easier to draw on top of coloured pencil than it is to colour kind of colour around an inky line. Because that means sometimes you smudge the ink and all sorts of things. So I'm going to wait a little bit to do that. And I'm also going to wait. I'm going to add an arm down here so i'm going to add an arm here and i'll do the other one waving but we'll do those after we've colored in as well but what we can do is add our rats tails now rats they have pretty long tails then they 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 use their tails for balance um so that when they're running along the tail the big long sort of wiggly tail can keep them balanced when they're running along sort of narrow ledges things like that but also do you know what they use their tails to keep themselves cool because they can sort of let some of their body heat out through their tails um, and it helps to keep a rat cool didn't know that see you learn stuff with drawers rob you learn stuff every single time um so we're going to do a very long curly rat's tail so from about a centimeter above this corner here i want you to start drawing a wiggly line now your rat's tail can be any sort of wiggly shape that you want but i'm going to come all the way up then i think i'm going to go down and then i'm going to go up again like that so a nice but you can do yours with it however you want then what we do when we get to the end we're going to turn around i'm not going to do it in a real point i'm going to keep it like a little curvy bit and then we're going to start quite thin so we keep our line close to the original line like that but i'm getting gradually wider and wider as i move closer to the body so by the time our tail joins back up with the body it's sort of at its widest point like that oh yeah i think that's why we're a bit scared of rats the tails they're a bit creepy aren't they do you know what should i tell you my story about a rat <laughs> so i live in london and i live in a victorian house so quite an old house in london and um when we moved in which was a long time ago now that we had there were rats in our house and they used to pop up in the kitchen every now and then sometimes you come down for breakfast and there'd just be a big old rat sitting in the middle of the kitchen just looking at us. And I'm not going to lie, I used to scream <laughs> when I saw that, oh! this huge rat. Because we live at the end of our garden, so near to where I'm sitting now, there's a railway line. Kind of the tube line, a bit of the northern line is up there. And I think lots of rats like it around here. Because, um, yeah, they like the trains, don't they? Do you sometimes see those little tiny rats on the London Underground? Oh, they might be mice. I don't know, but anyway, they like they like railways, rats do. Um, and so we have lots of rats here. And, um, and do you know what, once, listen to this, once we were in bed at night and we could hear a noise in our bedroom and there was something scrabbling around. And, um, and I looked, I sort of turned the light on, I couldn't see anything on the floor, but it sounded like, <laughs> this is really, this is really scary. My wife had hung a, like, a sh like a bag onto the coat hook on the back of our bedroom door. She brought it up from downstairs. I don't know why, she must have had something in it. She brought it up with her when we went to bed and she hung it on the back of her door. And do you know what had happened? A rat had crawled into the bag downstairs when we didn't even know. She, <laughs> she had picked the bag up with a rat in it, didn't know there was a rat in it. And then she'd hung it on the back of her bedroom door <laughs> and this rat had been sort of scrabbling around inside the bag. So when I sort of got up and was looking around, I could hear this thing and I could see <laughs> this bag was moving. Honestly, I've never been so scared in my entire life and inside with this rat. So I sort of chucked the bag on the floor and this rat ran out and boom, scampered off downstairs, disappeared to wherever he'd come from. Oh my gosh, isn't that weird? <laughs> so there you go, my little rat story for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen rats for ages actually. I think what we did, we worked out where they were coming in and we blocked it off so they couldn't come in anymore. But I do see them outside my studio sometimes. Um, and I say hello, they're nice, they're friendly. They're not gonna hurt me. Um, anyway, right, so there's our basic shape for our rat. As I said, I've got bits and pieces to add on to this later on, but I am now gonna go into super speed mode and color my rat in. You can color your rats any color you like. You know what, you know what I like multicolored rats rainbow rats um that's what i like to see from you guys i'm going to do mine brown the regular rat color because i think that's what color woodhouse is in my peanut jones books so i'm going to stick to the regular rat color but you do yours any colors you like and i will see you back here in about 20 seconds you ready three two one let's go
Okay, my coloured in rat. What can I tell you? Right, let's have a look. So you can see, first of all, I've um, I've added a slightly darker area. I'm just going to add a bit of black lines around here. So I added a bit of darker area just around the eyes to make them look like they're sunk back a little bit. Um, I've used the I do this often when I do furry animals. I've used a lot of lines when I'm colouring in just to add a little bit of a furry texture. So I went from a kind of pale, light brown to kind of a darker brown, and each time I built up the layers, I'd sort of did it in lots of lots of sort of line strokes like that and it makes your rat look a little bit furrier um, I've done things like you know slightly darker on the rear legs and the rear ear just to make it a bit more three-dimensional the tail this creeped me out now the tail you know I told you that story about the rat in the bag <laughs> I'm sort of creeped out by it all again <laughs> it was so scary and just drawing this tail really reminded me of it the tail I really remember this tail <laughs> disappearing out of the door um, so I've done it sort of like a, like almost like um, the same colour as my arm, really, sort of this pinky colour with all these lines, these kind of segments, because the tails are really, they can move and they're really strong and they can move lots, a bit like a worm really, in lots of kind of segments. So I added these lines here. Ooh, um, sorry, it's not very, I shouldn't be creeped out, but they're just nice. Rats are nice creatures. There's nothing reason to be creeped out by them. It's just because of the bag incident, I promise you. Um, and yeah, and I did the feet the same color as that. Right now, let's add some eyebrows. So we're gonna add eyebrows. I'm doing mine like this. It just makes our rat look a bit friendlier if you add them like that, quite a long way above the eyes. And we're gonna add some whiskers. Now the whiskers I'm gonna do like this. I'm gonna do three whiskers here. One, two, three, coming down at that angle. And that means I'll do the others going sort of the same angle away. One, two, three. There we go. Little whiskers. And that way, kind of, they don't sort of get too involved with other areas of the drawing and sort of um, detract from those areas. Now, it's time to do the arms. So I'm going to do one arm down here. We're going to do it quite low down. And we're just going to draw them like this. We're going to do sort of an oblong shape. But I'm going to do little kind of furry bit at the end like that and we're just going to do three sides with a little kind of furry bit at the end and then I'm going to add the claws like this and do a thumb claw there and then we're just going to do three long claws here now cartoon rat they don't really have thumbs they don't certainly not opposable thumbs but the cartoon version does and then do you know what I was going to do the other arm waving but I think I'm going to leave it like that actually but I will add a bit of more dark brown oh that's just smudged my ink that was not clever see what I mean about the ink smudging so I'm just gonna add a little bit more dark brown there where's my really dark brown here it is and just oh that's sort of red the wrong color in it picked up the wrong one see this one oh, I don't know that'll do and let's get my black pen I'm going back over here there we go just to just to lift that arm very very slightly from the rest of my drawing um yeah i was thinking about adding a waving arm but i just quite like the rat sitting there like that and i think that is pretty much done oh the other thing i did i sort of added a lighter circle in the middle of the ear that's kind of facing us because they sort of have this sort of lining don't they in their ears um rats and rodents and mice things like that and so i just wanted to just create a bit more kind of interest really in that ear so it wasn't just a round brown disc there was a couple of layers to it so there we go there's my rat oh the other thing my shadow I always talk about shadow so easy just scribble I've done a couple of sort of a pale gray and a slightly darker gray just to make the drawing look 3d make it look like a rat is sitting on a surface do you know another thing you could do if you wanted to you can add a little cheek so I'm just gonna add slightly darker brown there a slight ready tinge and then we'll go in here like that and I'll just fade it out and there we're just adding a little bit of a rosy cheekedness to our rat to make him look a bit friendly at Woodhouse he's quite a, in the book Woodhouse is a good rat he's a friendly rat and as I said he has a very very important part to play in the story so there we go, that's how you draw a rat. The last thing we've got to do, possibly the most important thing of all, we need to sign our drawings. I'm going to do mine over here, just to balance it out. We'll just write Rob. There we go. Oop. Missed a bit there. How's that? Looks all right. What do you think? Pretty good? 
Not bad, not bad. Um, so there we go, that's how to draw a rat. Pretty fun one, wasn't it? Quite a simple one. I wanna see your drawings. I wonder whether we're gonna have any Technicolor rats or stripy rats or leopard spotted rats, <laughs> star colored rat, rainbow rats, who knows? Whatever, I want to see your drawings. So why don't you get someone to take a picture and then post it on social media using this hashtag, draw with Rob. That way I will get to see it. If you're watching on Facebook, you can just comment below and with a picture of your drawing. That way I'll get to see that too. Um, what else can I tell you? Why don't you subscribe, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn the notifications on. That way you'll get told when a new video is coming. Uh, you can also subscribe to my newsletter by just going to this website and um, clicking the subscribe button, put your email address in, click the subscribe button, that way you'll get an email into your inbox every time there's a new video or I've got a new book coming out or I'm going on tour or any other Rob news. Um, so you might as well do that, why not? You've got nothing to lose. Um, and that's about it, I think. Um, I've really liked showing you this rat from the third Peanut Jones book, The End of the Rainbow. Oh now, in paperback, look, there's the pen. Well, it's like the pen I use. See, similar, sort of similar. Um, so check that one out, it's good, it's good. Even if I do say so myself. There we go, I could put that quote on the cover, it's good, Rob Bidolf. I don't think they let you do your own quotes so unfortunately. Anyway, stop talking Rob and let these good people get on with their days. It's been lovely showing you how to draw this rat. Take care everybody, keep on drawing, keep those pencils sharpened and I'll see you again very soon. Bye everyone. everyone it's Rob here I hope you enjoyed your draw with Rob video I'm just popping up here again at the end I've got Ringo with me as you can see he's having a bit of a nap at the moment um, but I just popped up here to tell you about my brand new draw with Rob activity book and this is it it's called draw with Rob in space and out of this world art activity book and I think you're really gonna like this one so what's inside it well we have um, lots of puzzles uh, like these ones. We have some bits where I've started off the drawing and you guys have to finish the drawing off. I really like this one. It shows the cockpit of a spaceship and you have to add the controls. We have some crafting ideas for you. There's even a card game in there too. And of course, plenty of our usual draw alongs like these guys. And of course, once you've done your draw alongs, you, you draw them in the little frame that I have made next to the instructions. And then can you see here, look, the pages, you probably can't see, but the pages are perforated down that side. So once you've done your drawing here, you just tear the page out, stick it up on the fridge, ready to display. And then once you've finished the entire book, once you've been through the whole activity book, you've got a nice certificate. You know, this is to certify that your name is officially a space superstar. So lots and lots of interstellar entertainment for you to keep you occupied when you're not watching a Draw With Rob video. The book is available now um, from wherever you get your books. Try and support your local bookshop if you can. Um, and if you get it and you enjoy it, please let me know and send me lots of your pictures. I love to see your pictures. Right, that's it. I'm done. You can get on with the rest of your day now. I will see you very soon for another episode Draw with Rob. Bye, everyone.